Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, again, we're going to use the simplex method to solve a problem for farmers. We're going to plant two different crops. It costs a certain amount of money to plant each crop, a certain amount of labor for each crop. We get a certain amount of profit for each crop. How much of each crop should we plant and cultivate in order to make maximum profit? So the details here is that we have 200 acres available. Crop A costs $60 per acre to grow and 24, uh, 24 hours per acre to maintain. Crop B costs $76 per acre and requires 16 hours of labor per acre. We have $10,200 of available funds and we have 3,000 hours of available labor. And the question is how many of each crop should we grow in order to maximize profit? So here we have to define our variables. So let X equal the number of acres of crop A and let Y equal the number, the number of acres of crop B, because that's ultimately the question, how much of each crop should we grow? Determine what is being maximized, and in this case, we're trying to maximize profit, so we're still working on maximizing profit type of problems. We'll go into minimizing uh, costs and so forth in the near future. Determine the objective function. All right, so the profit function, profit is equal to, how much profit do we make? Ah, we don't have any profit numbers yet. Hmm, let me find out what I, what I got here for profit numbers. Ah, there we go. Couldn't find them. All right, so we make profit, $200 per acre for crop A, and $160 per acre for crop B. All right, so our objective function now looks as follows. Profit is... $200 per acre for crop A, which is represented by the variable X, plus $160 per acre for crop B, represented by variable Y. So that's how much profit we're going to make. Determine the constraint. So we have a constraint on the number of acres. That means X plus Y must be less than or equal to 200. We're constrained by the amount of dollars that we have. So that means 60 times X plus 76 times Y must be less than or equal to 10,200. And we have a third constraint, the number of hours. So that would be 24 hours times X plus 16 hours times Y must be less than or equal to 3,000. So we have three constraints, which means we need three equations with three slack variables. So the variables, the equations will be as follows. X plus Y plus our first slack variable equals 200. 60x plus 76y plus a second slack variable will equal 10,200 and 24x plus 16y plus a third slack variable will be 3,000. So we'll end up with three equations in our matrix because of the three conditions, the three constraints, plus a fourth equation for the objective function. We need to rewrite the objective function so we can put it in the matrix. We move everything over to the left side, so we get minus 200x minus 160y plus p equals 0. And then finally, we cannot put the augmented matrix together. So we have the variables x, y, three slack variables, the profit variable, and then we have to have the augmented portion of the matrix, which means all the numbers to the right side, the equal sign in every one of our four equations. So the first equation, putting down only the coefficients. For x, we get 1. For y, we get 1. We get 1 for the slack variable, 0, 0, 0. And the number is 200. The second equation, 60, 76, 0, 1, 0, 0. And the number is 10,200. The third is 24, 16. 0, 0, 1, 0, and the number is 3,000. And we, oh, 3,000, not 300. And then we draw the line, putting in these numbers, minus 200, minus 160, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0. So the basic solution is as follows. We have 0 for x, 0 for y. So we have S1 equals 200. S2 equals 10,200. S3 equals 3,000 and the profit equals zero because x equals zero and y equals zero. That's our basic solution to start off with. And of course, that's not where we want to end up with because we make zero profit. Okay, how do we do this now? Well, we want to find 
the pivot point, and we start with the column that has the biggest negative number, then we divide each one of these numbers by these numbers in that column to see what gives us the lowest ratio. So we have 200 divided by 1 is 200. We have 10,200 divided by 60, which is equal to 200 divided by 60 is equal to 170. Uh, that's a lower number. And then we have 3,000 divided by 24, and that gives us 125. There is the lowest ratio of the three. That means we're going to pivot around this point, which means we need to turn that into a 1. That's the third row, so we take the third row and replace it by 1 over 24 times the third row. When we do that, we have the following matrix. 1 doesn't change. Row 2 doesn't change. Row 3 will be divided by 24. That makes this a 1. That's 2 thirds. 0, 0, 1 over 24, 0, and 3,000 divided by 24 is 125, and then the fourth row doesn't change, that becomes minus 200, minus 160, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0. All right, so now we have a pivot point, which is right here. This is our pivot point, and we want to get rid of this, we want to get rid of this, and we want to get rid of that number, which means we take the first row and replace it, by the negative of that number, which is minus 1, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R3, and adding it to R1. We take the second row, the negative of that number, which is minus 60, times the row with the 1 in it, adding it to row 2, and then we take the fourth row, we take the negative of that number, which is a positive 200, times the row with the 1 in it, adding it to row 4. All right, when we do that, we get the following matrix. The third row doesn't change, so it stays a 1, 2 thirds, 0, 0, 1, 24, 0, and 1, 25. All right. For the first row, minus 1 times 1 added to 1 that gives me 0. Minus 2 thirds added to 1 gives me 1 third. Nothing changes here. Nothing changes here. Negative 124 added, that is minus 1 over 24, 0. And negative 1 times this added to that gives me 75. All right. Second row, minus 60 times 1 added to that gives me 0. Minus 60 times this, that's minus 40 added to 76, which is 36. Nothing changes here, nothing changes there. And negative 60 times that added to 0 is minus 60 over 24, 0. And negative 60 times this, that's 125 times a negative 60 is a minus 7,500 added to 10,200 would be 2,700. And finally, the final bottom row here, it would be 200 times 1 added to that is 0. 200 times this, wow, that would be 400 divided by 3, added to minus 160, minus 160, that gives us minus 26 and 2 thirds. Nothing changes here, nothing changes here, and 200 times this added to that gives me 200 over 24, a 1. And 200 times 125, 200 times 125 gives me 25,000. All right, I have an intermediate solution now. Notice this is my x column, my y column. So when x is equal to 125, I will make a profit of $25,000. So that means x is the number of acres of crop A. So if I grow 125 acres of crop A and zero acres of crop B, then I will make $25,000, but maybe I could make more. So what do I do now? I still have a negative number here, so I'm going to go ahead and find the pivot point, which means I'm taking these three numbers and dividing it by these three numbers right here. So 75 divided by 1 third is 225. 2700 divided by 36. 2700 divided by, oop, let me do that again. 2700 divided by 36 equals 75. That's a low one. And 125 divided by 2 thirds, so 125 uh, times 3 divided by 2 equals, that's 187.5, so 125 divided by 2 thirds is 187.5. All right, so that's the lowest number. That means I'm going to pivot around this point right there. That means I need to turn that into a 1. I can do that by taking the second row, R2, 
and change the 1 over 36 times R2. In other words, let's take that entire row and dividing it by 36. If I do that, I get the following matrix. Notice nothing else changes except for the second, second row. So I have 0, 1 third, 1, 0, minus 1 over 24, 0, and 75. The third row remains at 1, 2 thirds, 0, 0, minus or a plus 1 over 24, 0 and 125. And the bottom row, that's a 5. The bottom row stays at 0, minus 26 and 2 thirds, 0, 0, 200 over 24, 1 and 25,000. Okay, starting to look better. Because now when I take the second row and divide everything by 36, I get a 0, I get a 1, 0, 1 over 36, minus 60 over 24 times 36. Don't need to know what that is. That's a 0. And 2,700 divided by 36 is 75. And there's my pivot point for the second column. So that I'm going to use to get rid of 1 third, to get rid of 2 thirds, and to get rid of the minus 26 and 2 thirds which means the first row is going to be replaced by the negative of that number, negative one-third, times the row with the one in it, which is the second row, adding it to row one. Row three is becoming the negative of that, negative two-thirds, times the row with the one in it, adding it to row three, and row four is becoming the negative of that number, 26 and two-thirds, it's a positive 26 and two-thirds, times the row with the one in it, which is R2, and adding it to R3. When I do that, this is a three, when I do that, I get the following matrix. Notice that the 1 with the 1 in it doesn't change. So that's 0, 1, 0, 1 over 36, negative 60 over 24 times 36, 0, and 75. Okay, what about the first row? Well, negative 1 third times this added to that gives me 0. So this is 0, that's 0. This will remain a 1. So we get negative one-third added to this. That would be negative one over 108. Here, negative one-third times this added to that. Well, question mark. I don't think it matters because this like variable no longer has any significance. This remains a zero. And negative one-third times 75 is a negative 25. Added to 75 gives me a 50. All right, that's the first row, third row. Minus 2 thirds times R2. So minus 2 thirds, well, this stays a 1. Minus 2 thirds times this, added to that, gives me 0. Minus 2 thirds, nothing changes here. Minus 2 thirds times this would be minus 2 over 108. Minus 2 over 108. Minus 2 thirds times this, added to that, question mark. Again, it doesn't matter because that slight variable is not important. It no longer has a value. That remains 0. And negative two-thirds times 75 is a minus 50 added to 125 is a oh, not 75 but 50 but 75 again negative two-thirds times 75 is negative 50 added to 125 is 75 and now we have our bottom row row four this is a zero 26 and two-thirds times this added to that is zero that remains zero um, let's see here, 136, we are negative 26 times that, well, question mark, doesn't matter, question mark, doesn't matter, this is a 1, and finally, negative 26 and 2 thirds times 75 added to this, wow, so 75 times 26.66666 equals, it's exactly 2,000, added to 25,000 is 27,000. Okay, quick clarification here because you saw me put some question marks in there and saying those no longer matter. Notice that the columns that don't have zeros and ones in them no longer are important. Only the columns with ones and zeros are important. This is my X column, my Y column, and my first like variable. Okay, notice what this means. My X is equal to 75. My Y is equal to 75. And my first lag variable is equal to 50. Notice that these are the number of acres for crop A, for crop B, 
and what's left over. 75 acres of crop A, 75 acres for crop B, and 50 acres not utilized, probably because I don't have enough money or hours to, to cultivate all of the acres, and I can maximize my profit by only cultivating 150 out of my 200 acres. I will make $27,000 worth of profit. So my profit is equal to $27,000, which is the maximum profit I can make off of those 200 acres by only utilizing 75 acres for crop A and 75 acres for crop B. Now, just to make sure we have this correct, let's go ahead and plug it into our objective function to make sure we have the right answer. So my objective function profit is equal to 200 times X plus 160 times Y. So 200 times 75 plus 160 times 75 should give us the right answer. So let's find out. So 200 times 75 plus 160 times 75 equals, and it is 27,000, which means I did it correctly this time. All right, so this is how we do that. We go to the simplex method until we no longer have any negative numbers over here. Then we just simply read from the column the x column means x equals 75, y column means y equals 75, my first like variable equals 50, that's a total acreage adding up to 200 acres, so we are good, that is the answer, and that's how we do a maximization problem using the simplex method. That's how it's done.